Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. We're talking about the digestive system. In the last video, we talked about digestion from A to Z. After you digest, it's time for you to absorb. What do you mean by absorption? I mean the food has to leave the small intestine and go to the blood, especially the blood in the territory of the portal venous system. And this portal vein will take it to the liver where metabolism happens, where storage happens, where all kinds of biotransformations happen. Then after this, the liver will send it to the circulation via hepatic veins. And then the hepatic veins will go to the inferior vena cava and then to the right atrium of your heart. And then your heart will pump those nutrients to the circulation all over your body so that all of your organs can eat. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. A matter of definitions. Digestion is converting macromolecules into smaller micromolecules. Break them down. Why do I have to break them down? Because only then will you be able to absorb them across a living biomembrane. And this is the membrane of your small intestine. And then we transport them to the blood. What kind of blood? Venous blood in the territory of the portal venous system. The tributaries of that system will take you to the liver for metabolism. And then hepatic veins, inferior vena cava, right atrium, and then to the lungs, get me some oxygen also, go to the left heart, and then pump that oxygen and nutrients to all your organs so that they can eat. How about the cell? The cell is going to take the oxygen and nutrients from the arterial side and dump carbon dioxide and waste onto the venous side. Welcome to kidneys land where you urinate and get rid of it. How about the food that was not absorbed? It's time for it to go to your poop. Digestion is to break down the big protein macromolecules into amino acids the big fat molecules into free fatty acid and to monoacylglycerols and to break the big carbohydrates such as starch or glycogen into glucose, fructose and galactose. Why are we doing this? So that we can send these lovely things to the cell so that the cell can get the ATP. And this is the difference between external digestion and internal digestion. Break down the big stuff into small stuff. Big stuff, small stuff. Big stuff, small stuff. This is digestion. After digestion, it's time for me to absorb the food from the lumen of the gut into the blood. If you are non-fat, i.e. carbohydrates or proteins, you will go to blood vessels. Why? Because these are water soluble. But if you are fat, you will be fat soluble. Thank you, Captain Obvious. And therefore, you will not go to blood vessels. You will go to lymph vessels via the lacteal, which is inside the core of the villus. These villi line the inside of your gut wall. Each villus is made of teeny tiny microvilli. Why do we need this? To increase the surface area available for absorption. The greater the surface area, the better the absorption. And in order for you to absorb fat and fat-soluble vitamins, you need three organs to be healthy. Liver and biliary system, pancreas and the gut itself. Before you absorb the fat, you have to digest it and emulsify the fat. Don't forget to say thank you to the bile salts. And where did they come from? They were bile acids made in the liver, stored in the gallbladder. Some mycel action, some chylomicrones action, boom, absorption into the lacteals. Lymph, and the lymph will return you back into big veins after the lymph cleanses your system. Pause and review. Again, to absorb fat, you need to digest fat. Thank you, pancreatic enzymes, lipase, colipase, cholesterol esterase, and phospholipase. And you need to emulsify the fat. Thank you, bile salts. Thank you, liver. This was the culmination of the last video. Digestion in just one chart. Carbohydrates are broken down into monosaccharides. Proteins are broken down into amino acids and dipeptides, sometimes tripeptides too. And triglycerides are being broken down into fatty acids and two monoacylglycerols. When you break down the macromolecules into micromolecules, now it's time to absorb them into 
the tributaries of the portal venous system and send them to the liver. If you are water soluble, such as the monoglycerides and the amino acids and peptides, you go the blood vessel route, some blood capillaries. But if you're fat soluble, you go through lymph capillaries in the gut, they are known as lacteals and they contain chyle, which is similar to lymph, but darker and milkier. The wall of the gut is made of mucosa, submucosa, musculosa, and serosa. The absorption happens in the inner layer, which is the mucosa, which is closer to the cavity or the lumen of your gut. Here is the wall of the small intestine. Here is the wall from the other side. What's the name of the cavity? Lumen. What's the name of the inner layer that lines it? Mucosa. What does it contain? Villi. This is a villus. This is a villus. This is a villus. Each villus is made of teeny tiny microvilli to increase surface area. Here are the capillary blood vessels. Here is the lacteal, which is the lymph vessels. Water soluble will go here. Fat soluble will go here. What's the end of those blood capillaries? Oh, 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 portal vein to the liver. What's the end of these lacteals? Oh, 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 lymph vessels, thoracic duct, left subclavian vein. Right, if you're going portal vein, you're gonna reach the liver, hepatic veins, inferior vena cava. But if you're going thoracic duct, you're going left subclavian vein, superior vena cava. Both the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava are gonna end up in the right atrium of your heart. And then from right atrium to right ventricle via the tricuspid valve, from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery, and then goes to the lung, back to the left atrium, left ventricle, before you know it, aorta, and we are all over the place. We have two main mechanisms of transport. You can go through the actual cell, through the mucosal cell called transcellular, through the cell, or you can go between one cell and the next cell, i.e. parallel to the cell, paracellular. All right, easy. The paracellular route is always passive. What do you mean by passive? There is no energy needed. You do not need any ATP to perform it. But the transcellular route could be active or could be passive. Passive means no energy needed. Active means energy is needed. And sometimes we need a carrier and it could be primary active transport if we are exerting energy actively on that location, and we have secondary active transport if we are dependent on the primary. How do these lovely monosaccharides reach the blood? Secondary active transport on the luminal border, followed by passive diffusion on the basolateral border. What do you mean by secondary? Well, secondary to the primary. Oh, dependent on the primary, ATPs. At the sodium potassium pump? Exactly. If you have watched my previous video, you would have known that cell membrane transport could be passive, no energy needed, and active, energy is needed. And then the active could be vesicular or carrier. The carrier could be primary active and secondary active. An example is here. Who's exerting the energy? This guy. Primary active. Who's dependent on the primary? This guy. Secondary active. Or how about this? primary active, the engine is here, the energy is exerted here, all right? Secondary active still requires energy, but the energy was not exerted at the site. The energy was exerted at the primary site. The secondary active transport is simply dependent on the primary active transport. Let's do it, absorption, let's go. Here is the lumen of the gut, all right? Here is the glucose, galactose, fructose, amino acids, dipeptides, tripeptides, Let's actually absorb them and send them to blood capillaries in the vicinity of the portal venous system. We have two borders that we need to cross. Here is the luminal border near the lumen. And this is the basolateral border because this is the apex of the cell. This is the base of the cell. Think of it as a cell that looks like this. All right, here's the apex of the cell. And here's the base of the cell. Apex is up here, base is here. Now, here's the apex, this border, and here's the basolateral border. Why? Because it's not just the base, it's the base and the lateral, basolateral. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So apical is something, basolateral is something. All right, apical is facing the lumen or the cavity of the gut. Basolateral is facing our blood vessels in the submucosa. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Let's go. This is secondary active transport, right? Which is dependent on the primary active transport. 
the primary sodium potassium ATPase. ATPase is an enzyme that breaks down ATP. Why do you break down ATP? Because when I break down ATP, I liberate energy. This energy is needed to make the pump start working. And the pump will pump sodium to the blood and potassium to the inside. Sodium is leaving the cell. The sodium is leaving, leaving, leaving. What's going to happen to the concentration of sodium inside the mucosal cell? It's going to decrease because it's leaving. All right. When the concentration here decreases, suddenly the concentration of sodium in the lumen of the intestine exceeds the concentration of sodium inside the mucosal cell, creating a gradient. And sodium is going to go down gradient, taking glucose with it against gradient. Oh, this needs energy. Yep, it's the energy liberated from this molecule of ATP at the other border using the primary sodium potassium ATPase. Sodium is coming into the cell, glucose is coming into the cell, sodium and glucose will be absorbed together, and therefore this transporter is called sodium glucose co-transporter, which is a secondary active transporter. Do we need energy? Yes. Do we need a carrier? Also yes. Sodium can come with glucose or accompanying galactose, fructose, amino acids, dipeptides, tripeptides, etc. Since we are in the mucosal cell, we have peptidases that will break down the dipeptides and tripeptides into amino acids, and then you go to the blood down gradient, and this is passive this time. But this will not happen if this did not happen. And the secondary active will never take place if it weren't for the primary active. That's how your cell can mobilize everybody using just one pump at one border, which is a very efficient system. This was the story of the carbohydrates and the proteins. How about absorption of fat then? Well, if you're small fat, you are fat, right? Yeah. And the membrane is what? Is made of lipid. Oh, lipid can diffuse through lipid. All right. And you can get by and reach the blood capillaries. But the problem happens with the big ones. These big ones are very thick and they cannot go to the blood vessel. They will not mix well there. Therefore, you have to package them and then you get triacylglycerol. After you package, become chylomicrons, lacteal, and this is lymph system. Let's talk about vitamins then. We have water-soluble vitamins such as vitamin B and vitamin C. They will go with the water-soluble micromolecules, proteins and carbs, into the blood. But if you are fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamin K, E, D and A, KEDA, lipid-soluble, you'll go with fat into the lymphatic system. There is a mnemonic in Arabic called BOS KEDA, which literally means look this way. Oh, BOS KEDA. B and C are water soluble. Keda is fat soluble. Pause and review. Absorption is crossing a membrane from the gut to the blood. Easy peasy. Absorption is not just biology, it's also pharmacology because pharmacokinetics is basically four things absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Of what? Of medications. You can learn more about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics in my general pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. You can download it today. I also have a kidney physiology course on the same website. You can also download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. The next 30 students can get a 40% discount towards any course on my website by using promo code TOXIDROME. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.